Star Wars is one of the most successful franchises ever. With over 30 films and shows, and many more on the way, it is no doubt that there have been some canned along the way. In this video, we're going to talk about the projects that could have been. Both Lucasfilm and Disney have scrapped numerous projects over the decades, so this video will be separated into pre and post Disney, but in no particular order. To kick us off, let's begin with perhaps the most well-known project. Several reports have claimed that Lucas envisioned his own sequel trilogy all the way back when he was creating the original trilogy. In 1980, Lucas stated that Star Wars was a nine-part saga, consisting of a beginning, middle, and an end. The plot of the sequel trilogy would have centered around Luke and Leia honing their skills and overcoming moral and philosophical problems. A romantic interest for Luke, his children, the rebirth of the Republic, and his legacy all would have been on the cards for this trilogy. So, what happened to these films? While there is no official statement from Lucasfilm, George Lucas in 2008 said that the movies were the story of Anakin and Luke Skywalker, and when Luke saves the galaxy and redeems his father, that's where the story ends. Seemingly, his vision changed. Since Disney has made their own sequel trilogy, we will never know how Lucas' version would have panned out. Despite being a consultant for the new films, Lucas has admitted that he is distant from the creative process these days. Although, back in the 70s, Lucas wasn't planning just 9 films, but 12. The other 3 films were to be spin-offs focusing on other characters. One of these offshoots would have been entirely about droids, specifically the beloved C-3PO and R2-D2, with no humans in the film at all. Lucas discussed this film in interviews a few times between the releases of A New Hope and The Empire Strikes Back, but never again. Although, if this sounds like your cup of tea, the 80s animated spin-off show, Droids, and the upcoming Disney movie, A Droid Story, may satiate your droidy needs. Another of these offshoots Lucas conceptualized was a Wookiee-centric movie. In an interview, Lucas said, when I got to working on the Wookiee, I thought of a film just about Wookiees, nothing else. So, for a time, I had a couple of odd movies with just those characters. As we have learned from the comics over the decades, the Wookiees have a rich history and culture. This, paired with the lush visuals of Kashyyyk, would have made for a spectacular movie, were it created. Like the previous droid movie, Lucas just stopped mentioning it one day, and that was that. But unlike the droid movie, there are no Wookiee-ish alternatives, currently or planned. Hopefully one day, we will get to fully explore Kashyyyk's jungles. As some of you may remember, in 2012, The Phantom Menace underwent a 3D re-release with these awesome pod racing goggles. The release was fairly successful, raking in over $100 million worldwide pushing the film's overall worldwide takings to over $1 billion. The whole prequel trilogy was destined for the same fate, but 2012 was also the year of the Disney acquisition, who promptly scrapped the plans for the other two films' re-releases in lieu of creating their sequel trilogy. As well as cancelling the 3D prequel movies when they came in, Disney also cancelled a show called Star Wars Detours. The show was completely finished, 39 episodes split across two seasons, they even released a trailer for it. Yo dudes, the Empire's pretty chill, maybe you could like join it or something. It was an animated comedy created by the creators of Robot Chicken. It was by no means a small production, featuring names like Weird Al Yankovic and Seth MacFarlane. Alas, Disney did not think the silly, irreverent tone of the show fitted their newly acquired franchise. Hence, they canned it. In 2005, Lucas announced two new shows, one that became the animated Clone Wars series, and the other was a live action dubbed Star Wars Underworld. A Coruscant based drug and prostitution ring, the Empire's rise to power, and a bounty hunter protagonist called Boba Fett were all speculated for the show. It was set to take place between episodes 3 and 4, 
An impressive set of writers from shows such as Battlestar Galactica, Life on Mars and Doctor Who scripted 50 episodes ready to be produced. However, once again, the Disney acquisition got in the way. No official statement was made, but after The Force Awakens was announced, there were no more mentions of Underworld. Currently, it does not seem likely that those 50 episodes are going to see the light of day, but one can hope. While Lucasfilm has a number of projects that never came to light, Lucasfilm under Disney has many more. We're talking projects that were either modified or completely removed from the board. Of course, some of these titles may surface eventually, but most will not. One of the first announcements Disney made following the acquisition was that Chronicle filmmaker Josh Trank would be creating a Star Wars movie. Years later, we found out that Boba Fett would be the protagonist, and a trailer was made for the movie. Unfortunately, the plug was pulled, allegedly due to Trank getting into some difficulties with his current project at the time, Fantastic Four. There was also a time when James Mangold, director of films like Logan and Girl Interrupted, was working on a Boba Fett movie. It is unlikely that this got very far into production though. We did of course, eventually, get the Book of Boba Fett series by Jon Favreau, which was okay. Without any more details, it is hard to say how Tranks or Mangold's movies would have compared. Solo is of course a movie we know and enjoy today, but once upon a time, Solo was to be made by the directors of The Lego Movie and 21 Jump Street, Phil Lord and Christopher Miller. Directors of these fun and adored films seemed ideal for the story about the lovable rascal Han Solo, but soon after production started, they left the project due to creative differences. At least we did get a version of Solo that was pretty good. Another alternate movie version we almost had was Episode 7 written by Michael Arndt, famous for his writing on Little Miss Sunshine and Toy Story 3. He worked on the production for about a year before departing for reasons that have not been revealed, at which point J.J. Abrams and Lawrence Kasten came in. Arndt's story is said to have been about the original trilogy characters in the future, as well as their children, coming against a new Jedi hunting villain. In the end, he did receive some writing credit, so some of his ideas must have been included in the final product, although the film would have likely been entirely different had he stayed on and stuck with his original vision. Similar to episode 7, episode 9 initially had a different writer. Colin Trevorrow, the man behind Jurassic World, spent years on the last installment of the sequel trilogy said to be called Duel of the Fates. A leaked version of the script exists, dating back to the 16th of December 2016, 11 days prior to Carrie Fisher's death. This script was written under the assumption that Fisher would be a crucial character in the episode, so her death was not just a major shock to fans, but also to the production. According to the script, we would see Rey and Kylo crossing paths on Mortis, a realm outside of any star system that Anakin, Ahsoka and Obi-Wan visit in the third season of the Clone Wars series. It is said to be an extremely powerful conduit through which the Force flowed. Meanwhile, the Resistance, including Chewbacca and Leia, and the First Order are locked in a battle on Coruscant, in which the Resistance ultimately comes out on top. Finally, the film would end on a scene of Finn and Rey preparing to train the next generation of Jedi. No official statement was given as to why Trevorrow left, but it is generally believed that Lucasfilm wasn't enthusiastic about the film's direction. That's when J.J. Abrams once again came in. In 2019, Disney officially announced that the makers of Game of Thrones, David Benioff and D.B. Weiss, were to make a Star Wars film. It was going to be the first film after Rise of Skywalker, due to release in 2022. Rumours say it would have been about the Jedi Order, the precursor of the Jedi Order. We discussed the Jedi in depth in our video about the Grey Orders of the Force, if you'd like to know more about them. The backlash the Game of Thrones finale received, paired with the disappointing reception of the Rise of Skywalker, 
prompted Lucasfilm and Disney to rethink the direction of the franchise, and Benioff and Vice were dismissed. Sometime around 2017, there was an Obi-Wan Kenobi movie being made by Billy Elliot director Stephen Daldry, but in the aftermath of Solo, it was shelved. Later, it was revealed that the original plan was for an entire Kenobi trilogy. Recently, the project came off the shelf and was repackaged as the Disney Plus Kenobi series, taking influence from the ideas Doldry had for the movie. As there were three movies planned, then one could speculate that this translates to three seasons of Kenobi. Here's hoping. A couple years ago, news broke of several upcoming Star Wars shows, those being The Book of Boba Fett, Ahsoka, and something called Rangers of the New Republic. Not much is known about Rangers of the New Republic, apart from the fact that it was a Mandalorian spin-off and Cara Dune would likely be a main character. However, after Cara Dune actor Gina Carano made some abhorrent posts on social media, she was fired from the show, thereby halting production. Rangers of the New Republic is not entirely gone though, as many of the ideas and stories from the show are said to be incorporated into an upcoming season of The Mandalorian. In 2013, a photo leaked of a program revealing an upcoming Darth Vader based TV special set for release in 2014. What this TV special could have been, no one has any idea. And aside from this single nugget of information, we've never heard of this project again. Although we will never see this TV special, whatever that means exactly, Disney has found fertile grounds in the 19 year gap between episodes 3 and 4, so perhaps we shouldn't count it as cancelled just yet. Lucasfilm announced in 2022 that Patty Jenkins, director of Wonder Woman, would create a film featuring rebel pilots called Rogue Squadron. They even gave it a December 2023 release date. But one day, Lucasfilm stopped talking about it and eventually they removed it from their schedule. It is believed that the film will still be made, but not in 2023, that's for sure. And that is the current list, as far as we are aware. Who knows what other projects have been discussed that we have no knowledge of? Which of these will come back? What Star Wars media would you like to see? Let me know down below.